the Russians, just in the last 24 hours, have made an absolutely stunning announcement about a discovery in Antarctica. The ramifications of this are going to change history. It would be my advice for everyone within the sound of my voice to begin learning one of four languages and make sure that your children, grandchildren, know one of these four languages. Spanish, Russian, Chinese, or some form of Arabic. Because those are going to be the four languages that are spoken in Antarctica. Now some might say, Florida Maquis, nobody can live in Antarctica. Not at the present moment. But based on what's now been discovered in Antarctica, that's going to change real fast. My only regret for being the age that I am is that I might not live to see the day when major cities operate on this continent like they operate in North America. But it's battlefield of the mind stuff. I'm sure a lot of people are scratching their head. Florida Maquis, I look all over YouTube and I can't find any videos from anyone about what you're talking about. Yeah, that's battlefield of the mind. If you watch the mainstream media and get caught up in their games, you'll never see it. We teach how to avoid this. Florida Maquis Patreon channel, as always. 24 cognitive biases, 24 logical fallacies. Every human being is born with them. Until you learn to overcome them, you will never see the truth. Over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month. Why? We have to have a speed bump. We have to have a way to keep the censors away, because believe me, there are folks out there, huge organizations and governments, that have a vested interest in you not knowing how to defeat the 24 cognitive biases and the 24 logical fallacies. You can get that key information for only one U.S. dollar per month. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. Let me say that again slower. Fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. Hundreds of videos over there already. Ready to go, $1, and you are in. And you can scroll back to 2018 and start from the beginning if you want to. Love to have you over there. Now, what's happened? What's the big announcement? Well, I brought up this map of Antarctica, ice-free, to give everybody an idea of the enormity of the announcement. The announcement is this. Russia finds world's largest oil reserve, but allegedly, ha ha ha, giant air quotes, cannot exploit it. A Russian geological agency vessel conducting surveys has found a huge reserve of oil and gas, which exceeds the known reserves of any country. May 19th, 2024, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, here on the East Coast. The Alexander Karpinsky, a vessel operated by Rosgeo, the Russian agency in charge of finding mineral reserves for commercial exploitation, has found oil reserves equivalent to about 511 billion barrels in Antarctica, according to the Telegraph. <coughs> Pardon me. The crude oil has been found, now pay attention, around the Antarctic Peninsula, the most accessible area of the frozen continent due to its proximity to the south of Argentina and Chile. Now let me back up to my map. You see this little island right here? The one I'm circling out, the Bellinghausen Sea, Alexander Island, Graham Land, Palmer Land, all this area right here, just this little area right here, is where they found more oil. You're going to have to sit down for this one. You're going to have to sit down for this one, trust me. More oil just in this little tiny area than in all of Canada and all of Venezuela combined. If you took all of the known oil reserves in Canada, all the known oil reserves in Venezuela, which until today was the biggest known reserve in the world, you could combine them and they still wouldn't reach 511 billion barrels. Now, they haven't begun to even look at the largest part of Antarctica. This represents less than 20% of Antarctica, the peninsula. And they've already found 
more oil, almost double what they found in Venezuela, which is more than what's in Saudi Arabia. It's an incredible find. It's a world-changing find. I mean, this is going to change the globe. And when they go down here, and they move down here with their ships, and they start exploiting this, and don't think that that treaty is going to stop them. That treaty is not going to stop them because they have the Chinese on their sides. And they have, how many of you remember? How many of you remember, only about a month or so ago, did a video. The Iranians have made a claim down here and begun moving military assets. There are going to be four languages spoken down here. Russian, Chinese, some forms of Arabic, and Spanish. Why Spanish? Because that's who's going to do the work. Argentina and Chile are going to be the ones who supply the workers. There might be some Portuguese. <coughs> Pardon me. But it's going to be primarily those four languages that you're going to need to know. According to the British Telegraph, let's see, we go through all this, scientific activities. The information published three days ago reports that Russian research vessels reported to Moscow the discovery of reserves totaling 500 and 11 billion barrels of oil, equivalent to 10 times the total production of the North Sea over 50 years, or 30 times the Vaca Muerta formation, considering that the Nequen formation holds reserves of around 16 billion barrels. This information was presented with compelling evidence last week to the uh, EAC in the United Kingdom. One second. Established in 2011, Rostio brings together 63 companies in the sector that have discovered more than 1,000 significant deposits of gas, gold, and other resources, dozens of which are in countries across Asia, Europe, Africa, and Latin America. Now, it's very unlikely that that treaty will stop anyone from going down there and exploiting all of these riches in resources. Now, another story related... Underwater time bomb. Meltwater ponds threaten Antarctic stability. You see, this is what a lot of folks don't get. First China-made icebreaker reaches Antarctica. This was a thumbnail that I used back in September and everybody laughed. Everybody thought this was funny last September. Florida Maki, why do you put all this, these crazy thumbnails out? They never come true. Guess what? It comes true. You just, most who say that don't have the patience. Russia and China in the Arctic is the U.S. facing an icebreaker gap. See, everybody thought it was about the North Pole. It's not about the North Pole. It's about the South Pole. These mass blasts of water coming out of here. Antarctica is a place that has more fresh water by orders of magnitude than anywhere else in the world. It now has more oil and gas than anywhere else in the world. And, allegedly, there's no civilization living there claiming it. It's just there to go get. <clears throat> That's all they got to do. Now, is just go get it. And the U.S. won't do a thing about it. We're broke. Besides, you can't, you can't project military power that far. Wait, Florida Maki, we projected military power all the way to the other side of the, the, yes, in the northern hemisphere. And it was a huge heavy lift, those of you talking about the Gulf War, where we projected military power all the way over the Middle East. That is a piece of cake compared to trying to project military power to the roaring 40s, so to speak, down to Antarctica. It's not possible to conduct aircraft carrier operations in those seas. You can't land and take off aircraft. They're so rough. Besides, what are you going to do? We'll start bombing oil wells? Like, you know, like Saddam did? Back during, remember the, remember the big black clouds over the, is that what we're going to do? No, we're not going to do anything about it. And the Russians and the Chinese are going to control the world's largest supplies of what will likely be gold, oil, gas, lithium, 
coal, water, and eventually, eventually, in a long enough timeline, agriculture. Because once they get set up down there, it's only going to be a matter of time. They're going to have never-ending supplies of energy. Believe me, with never-ending supplies of energy, never-ending supplies of fresh water, you can get a hell of a lot done. Massive nuclear-capable icebreakers by the dozens going down there that just sit and operate, and the only thing that needs to go back and forth, at least for a time, are just food resupply and, you know, basic essentials until they get things stood up. The last thing I'll leave with is this, because I think it's relevant. I took off all the layers of uh, North America here, and I always kind of like to spin it around to show the, the uh, layout here in, in a different perspective. At one time, for hundreds of years, starting in about, oh, the early 1500s, everything from what we know to be Corpus Christi, Galveston, all the way through past New Orleans, all the way around the Keys, all the way up the East Coast, past New York, all the way to Nova Scotia, was known as one thing. To the Spanish, who were the only ones here, it was called La Florida, or what we call Florida. This entire area was called La Florida for generations it was only into the 1600s the early 1600s when the english began calling it the new world and jamestown and all that but prior to that for 100 years or so there was nothing but la florida here that's what antarctica is now we call it antarctica we call it antarctica but once it gets settled down there and once people start setting up colonies, the name is going to change. It's going to be a different place. If you showed the new world, what we know to be the new world, to our ancestors even two or three hundred years ago, they would be absolutely floored and gobsmacked. They wouldn't even have words for it. And if we had that amount of time to live, we won't either. And that's one of the, probably the most fascinating things about living in this time for me and this subject that makes me not want to let it go. Because there is, forget outer space. Forget outer space. We have a whole entire continent that is melting right before our eyes and revealing unbelievable things. And it's melting faster and faster as the years go by. The amount of discoveries that are getting get made down here are going to put the they're going to put the Renaissance to shame. Every country, every country that has any interest in the war, it's going to be down here. You know, there. You know, I might have missed a language, maybe Indian as well. We'll have to see that. But right now, the two big leaders in the race, with a distant third being Iran, are Russia and China. And with their assets and their combined. Abilities, there's really not much we're going to do about it. Now, if we were smart, we'd get on board with them. If we were smart, we'd sit down, hash out something, and get on board with them. But I'm going to show it again. You see this little tiny island? This little bitty, teeny tiny island. Just this area down here. And I say tiny. I mean, this area is larger than all of Europe. But comparatively speaking, to the whole, they've already found more, more fuel and natural resources than the largest known reserves anywhere. It's a stunning announcement. It truly is. But it's not on any headlines anywhere. So that's why we're here. Love to have you at the Patreon channel. Could sure use the help these days. Only a buck a month. I know it doesn't sound like much, but man... When you guys all get together and decide you want to do something to help out, it makes a big difference. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.